Tonight's film is a dramatization based on the experiences of one family in crisis. something on television. Huh. Well, if it's not there, go to my desk and look in the bottom left-hand drawer. Yeah. yeah. No, it's a it's a blue file. It should be marked Harris Aviation. Did you have a good flight? Great. You should have come up with me. Well, someone has to mind the store. Right, hold on. Nance. Oh, my God, is that my prom dress? You found it. All right, great. Is that ball? You hey, guys, oh, my dress arrived. Oh, it's nice. Oh, oh, thanks. There's a horse. I would have traded him. Yeah. Hey, it's... Oh, it's gorgeous. <laughs> and it, it's red. When we went shopping, I thought we decided on the black one. Now, if they sent the wrong one. No, it was me. I decided the red one would be more fun. Was I wrong? Well, I mean, you know how I feel about black. To me, it is the primary color. But you will knock them dead. Well, come on. Let's see it. Let's try it on. Nancy, if you are having second thoughts, tell me there's time to change it. Or get something else if you want. Mom, it's not the dress. I don't know. I, I, I guess I feel kind of silly. I, I just feel kind of sad now. How do you think I feel? My little girl, my best friend, is growing up and leaving here. What's not to be sad about, huh? night. Stay, Nance. This day. It's almost two in the morning. I'm gonna pretend I didn't hear that. It's gotta end sometime. Why? Debbie, you wanna go over the park? Yeah, sounds good. Uh, I'm starving. Let's pick up a couple pizzas. More like a couple dozen. All right, okay, <laughs> come on. Come on, you guys. Come on. <laughs> Where do you suppose it will all be ten years from now? <laughs> Admiral, U.S. Navy. Ooh. The youngest and the best. Oh. Man. <laughs> sure. What about you? Me. Yeah. A lawyer. 
Mm. Probably defending you for conduct and becoming a tail hook 2004. Uh -huh. Well, so how do your other client? Same charge. <laughs> <laughs> a second thought, maybe I'll be a prosecutor. <laughs> what about you, Nance? What's in your future? Me? The whole idea of the future is a big blank. You see, the, the truth is, I've never really thought about it. I think 18 is as good as things can get. And what I'd really like is for things to stay exactly the way they are right now, forever. Pizza? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> upstairs, remember? Oh, I know. So, tell me, how was the prom? Perfect. I wish I could have frozen it in time and had it forever. Yeah? Yeah. Well, it's over. And you are officially a college girl. Yeah. Don't get too excited, sis. Oh, trust me. Mom's excited enough for the both of us. You want to go, right? Yeah, sure. I'm just being a stress case. And everything will be cool tomorrow, right? Right. Right. It is tomorrow. Which reminds me, Mom called Dr. Satin. You have an appointment to get your wisdom teeth yanked at 1 o'clock. What? The day after my prom? Yeah. I told Mom I would call him myself. I mean, they are my teeth. I know. And it is our mom. <laughs> Good point. Night. Night. See you tomorrow. Are you coming up? In a minute. Tommy's gonna earn his tuition raising goldfish? Oh, koi, not goldfish, koi. You know how much one of those puppies costs? I'm not gonna pay for all of his tuition, he's just gonna pay for a fine. That's right. Dad's gonna pay for the rest. Yeah. He's gonna get a full scholarship and get me off the hook. Uh... How you feeling, hon? I've had better days. How many did he pull? All of them. All of them? I thought you were only supposed to do one side at a time. I hate that dentist. Can I get you some yogurt, honey? How about some ice? Oh, that's OK, Mom. I'm fine. I'm late. Good dinner. Uh, I really just want to sleep. Trust me, if I miss a meal, the world won't come to an end. I'll bring you up some crackers. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> you got man. All right, go. I am so hungry. I'm so busy, I missed lunch. What about you? Nance? I'm fine. The guy in the stationery store, he ordered a tuna salad on rye that he canceled. You want to share? You have it. It's gigantic. Have half. Yeah, I'm still having trouble with solid food. I mean, it's totally amazing how much pain a bunch of missing teeth can cause. Still, you had those out about three weeks ago, didn't you? Uh-huh. And my jaw feels like I was hit with a brick. Are you sure you don't want half? No, really? 
Anyway, I'm out of here. Lucky you. See you tomorrow. Bye. You're home early. Oh, I had to go in the city. The traffic was god awful, so I skipped going to the office. Honey, take your shoes off the table. I'm going upstairs in a minute, Mom. Anything for me? Yeah, this thing from the college. You got into the best dorm, but they put you in a single room. Oh, yes. Yes, what? I can't believe you want to be all by yourself in a strange place. You'd be miserable. I mean, why would you want to be all by yourself? Not me, that's for sure. Well, if I don't like it, I can change it later, right? All right, fair enough. But to me, college is about meeting new people and having fun. Think about it, Nance. Ride. I'm fine. I'm exercising. A bunch of us are going bowling tonight at 8 o'clock. You want me to pick you up? Uh, I'm not really in the mood, but thanks anyway. Come on, Nance. You turn into a hermit, you know. I'll see you, okay? I'll call you. It'll be fun. Excuse me. Nance? Oh, none for me, thanks. Is that all you're eating? Well, I ran into Debbie. They're going bowling tonight, so I'm sure she's going to pig out on some pizza or something. Uh, no, tonight I'm exhausted. The deli was packed. Are you feeling sick? No, I'm fine. Well, if then you, you should go. Your lasagna, It'd be good for you to hang out with your friend. Well, I, I didn't want to worry anyone, but I thought it was all healed up, and my jaw's starting to hurt again. Well, you should have told me. She should go back to the dentist. No, why don't we just put some ice on it and you take a couple of aspirin. And later, if you're hungry, I'll leave some of this on the stove for you, all right? That'd be great. Thanks. Oh, I forgot to tell you. I talked to the housing people at the college, and they can put you in a really nice double room. You'd share with a girl from Philadelphia. Mom, I thought we already settled that. Please, I want my own room. I I've always had my own room. Well, why would you want to live by yourself? Why would you want to get involved? I just wanted you to have the option. Mom, I like my privacy. I like being by myself. I like my own space. I don't see what's wrong hey, with look, that. Enough I mean, about the room already, all right? I don't know if she's going to be happy by herself. I'm going to go take that aspirin. What is going on with you two? Oh, she's acting crazy. I don't know what's wrong with her. She's got college jitters. You know, it'll pass. Sweetie. Uh, I can't, Mom. I've got a lot more packing to do. Oh, okay. Go on. Take your breakfast with you. Why? <laughs> I can't believe this is your last day here. The house won't be the same without you. Mom, I'll be home on weekends. No, you won't. You'll be having too much fun. I miss you already. Mom? I'm sorry, I've been acting kind of crappy lately. And I guess I've just been a little nervous. It's so weird thinking about a new life. But I know you. <laughs> You're gonna be fine. You really think so? Yeah, I know so. Love you, honey. I love you too, Mom. Mom wants me to bring down the rest of your stuff. 
Oh, okay. Um, well, we bring that down, then I'll bring this down when I'm through. Okay. Hey, Nance, you losing weight? No, still 120, soaking wet. Why, well, you looking good. Thanks. Anyway, I, I'm gonna miss you, Nance. I'm gonna miss you, too. I think it's the third one up. I think that one's your dorm. Maybe it would be better if I came back tomorrow. We could stay in town somewhere. And I've got so much stuff, they're gonna think I'm crazy. Are you serious? She's got enough stuff for the whole four years. Mom, I wanna go back home. Wait a minute. now. I'm the one who's gonna be sitting in the kitchen drinking hot chocolate all by my lonesome. You'll be hanging out with your new friends, having a ball. Hi, I'm Allison, room 204. 202, Nancy. I'll see you later. See, piece of cake. You got a friend already. Well, it's not much of a room, but I think we can do something with it. All right, let's put the desk under the window. All right? And then we should unpack your clothes first so that they don't get even more wrinkled. And then we'll do the books after. Is that right? You like it? I guess so. All right, let's see. We'll put, we'll put the bed over there so that you can get the view and the morning light. All right? Where there's a will, there's a way, that's what I say. Well, there's one left. Great. Thanks. The dollar says we don't see her face again tonight. And tomorrow she tells us she have to study. She is weird. Lighten up, huh? She's okay. Study, study, study. Run, run, run. She is weird, weird, weird. <laughs> No, Ma, she's still oh, in there. For goodness sake. Nance, are you asleep? I was. Debbie called. She's on her way over. How did that happen? I told her to come. You hang out with her. 
You got here Friday morning, and you've been in bed ever since. Debbie really wants to see you, and you've got to get up and join the human race. Mom, I came home to get away from the human race. And besides, I think it's my job to invite my friends over, not yours. See? <laughs> Six weeks away at school, and you don't need any help from anybody. If you get up and come downstairs, you'll feel much better about everything. Trust me. I know. Okay. Well, let's see. I met a couple of really nice girls. And a couple of major guys. <laughs> what about you? Yeah, same here. Any special guy? I'm not ready to settle down yet. Do you have any idea how many calories you just ate? A thousand, at least. <laughs> hey, you're only young once, right? <laughs> um, speaking of which, are you going to Danny Asante's tonight? And his parents are away for the weekend? I don't know. Um, I have a history test, and it's my mom's birthday, and I, I have a lot of homework. Nancy, we only have tonight and a few hours tomorrow. I'll try, okay? What is wrong? Are we staying out together all the time? Nothing. I'll try and make it to Danny's, okay? Your mother's here. Hi, Nancy. Honey, we're late. Okay. Later. Him on as much as those planes do. Mom, please. Thanks. Hi, Hud. <laughs> Getting Gander a Walsh Aviation's newest acquisition. Yeah, did you get it for a good price? Exactly what we talked about. But these, however, cost me a fortune. Happy birthday. Come on, guys, you gotta go. Pat and Tommy are waiting. Yeah? Uh -huh. Hey, Dad, did it cost a lot? Come on. The fish were more expensive the than the airplane. Fish were more expensive. The airplane's an antique. This is wonderful. Yeah, but Dad, it's gonna pay for my clothes. Nancy, you didn't need a thing. And um, the dressing was a little weird. I can get you something else if you like. Yeah. Um, no, that's okay. I had a ton of garlic bread. Where? Not here, that's for sure. Leave her alone. She'll eat when she wants to. Yeah, as you see, this like this wash doesn't even fit anymore. Look at that. Well, not everyone has to stuff themselves like a pig, oh, Tommy. Oh, Nancy, what a rude. Little <laughs> girl. I'm just saying that I had enough, so back up, okay? Well, back I just said you were I thought we were here to have a good time. No, I think Nancy's idea of a good time is making everybody else miserable. Patrick, you're the one who's making everyone miserable. Come on, I was kidding. Oh, man, Knock it off. Knock it off. Oh, Knock it off. all right. Now, don't sing that song. I don't like that song. That song makes me feel ancient. <laughs> and where, where are the candles? <laughs> okay. Ten more minutes for me. Nancy's calling from school at five. You know, Debbie almost never hears from her anymore. Yeah. School kids are really busy. I saw her last weekend, running on Macapin. She's really very thin, Sally. Very thin. Debbie's noticed it, too. You know, kids, they either eat everything in sight or they don't eat anything at all. Listen for a minute, OK? My friend Sheila is the guidance counselor at school. I described Nancy to her. You what? She said the girl I was talking about could be anorexic. I didn't mention anorexic. any names. Anorexic? Well, your friend must be out of her mind. There is no way that Nancy would starve herself. No way. You just tell whatever her name is from me. She's nuts. Sal, I think you should talk to her. Nancy is just fine. 
She's a little stressed out, maybe. She's working too hard, and she's not eating right. But she'd be home soon for the holidays, and she'll relax, and we'll fatten her up. And believe me, she'll go right back to being my Nancy. At least talk to your own doctor. Oh, I've had it. Hey, sis. Got a minute? What? Oh, boy. Oh, boy, what, Tommy? <laughs> Ever since we were kids, Sal, uh, whenever I hear that particular what out of your mouth, my brain tells my feet to move and fast. Lousy mood. Really? Yeah. Anything I can do? Well, I'll get over it. So what? Two things. Friday night, Cindy's having a party for me. My 10th AA birthday. 10 years? Already? Yeah, sometimes it feels like one, sometimes a hundred. But I want you and Tom to come. And the kids, too. We'll be and there. what they want. Yes. Uh, two. I was out shopping for Cindy, and I found a present for Nancy for Christmas. What do you think? Huh? Come on. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, you like? Fabulous. Ah, great. I just wanted to be sure. You know, I really miss Nancy. It was so nice when she used to come into the restaurant, you know, and visit with me. How's she doing? Great. Yeah? Tommy, what you back? Oh, yeah, sorry. Well, I gotta run. Tom, see ya. Sal, Bye. thanks. Bye-bye. Charlie is bringing his plane in on Tuesday. He wants us to give him an estimate on overhauling his engine. Sally Walsh. Yeah. What is it? Okay. Yeah, it's okay. All right, look, I gotta run. Thanks for calling. What was that all about? Phyllis. She owed me an apology. What for? With the gym. <laughs> Just way out of line. What did she say? You know, she has this cockamamie idea that Nancy's anorexic. You mean like she's starving herself? Yeah. I mean, she's lost some weight, but I think she looks great. She looks fabulous. Don't worry about it. I'm not going to worry about it. <sighs> the entire U.S. Army couldn't have used this many dishes. Tuesday. No. First, I'm going to ask you if this one was yours. Patrick, our dishes match in case you didn't notice. I mean, who knows whose that one is? Well, I do. It's yours. You know how I can tell? Because the meal's still on it. Patrick, mom's best napkins. What is wrong with you, Nancy? Nothing is wrong. Well, you... Patrick, please, just leave me alone, okay? What's going on in there? Nothing. I just dropped a fork down the disposal. Not one of my good forks. I grabbed it, Mom. <sighs> Let's go out for a little air. Okay, that's a good idea. Hey, thanks for cleaning up, guys. You're welcome. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, Mom. You too, Mom. <laughs> Did you see how much she ate? When I saw she finished all of that turkey, the dressing, the mashed potatoes, I knew she was her old self oh. again. Yeah, me too. I'm optimistic. I am if you are. But, you know, just in case, I think she should see Dr. Martin just in case she's a little anemic or something. I was thinking the same thing. You know, people say we're starting to look alike, too. Really? Mm-hmm. Lucky for you.
oven for a couple of minutes. Uh -huh. I've got to run this dress up to Nancy. Enough time. We're gonna freeze our butts off out of here. A couple more. Tom! Why? Tom. What's the matter? <laughs> the matter? All, those, all those baggy clothes she wore must have hit it. What happened? Tell me what happened. She's like a skeleton. I don't think she could weigh a hundred pounds. Every bone, every rib. Oh my god, Come what is happening on. to her? Come on, we're going you got busy working on that sure. coin pond. Dad's <clears throat> working on it. Pat, you need to try to work on that. She's got me working around the clock. You should see my hands. I got like Merry Christmas, everyone. It's terrible. something bothering you. And if you tell us what it is, we can help you. I don't know what it is. You're hurting yourself. I know. I know, Mom. But I'm not gonna put up with this, young lady. It's got to stop. Okay. I know. We have to hear from you that you're going to start to eat. Dad, I do eat. You don't eat enough to feed a mouse. You have to eat normally, like a normal person. All right, I will. I will. You mean that? I want your word on this. I mean it, Mom. I didn't know that I was warning you guys this much. Please, you've got to believe me. Everything is going to be okay. I promise. Can I be excused now? I have a lot of stuff to do. Yeah. Thank you. I think she knows we mean business. Hey! Sally! Wrong. Okay. What the hell's going on? What? What? I call up, you don't call back. Then I get Nancy and she says she's going back to school. Tom and I had a very serious talk with her. And she promised she'd eat. Now you know Nancy. A promise is a promise with her. She's very trustworthy. It'll be fine. We can handle this. Well, I think you and Tom should have another talk. Because you need to put her in Parker Pavilion, Sally. They have a good eating disorders program. She has to gain weight. I just told you she promised she would. It doesn't mean a damn thing that she promised she would. Sally, I've seen this. Don't fool yourself into thinking you've got it under control, because if it isn't stopped, she could die.
Why did you tell my mother all those lies about me being sick and how I ought to be in that Parker Pavilion place? They're not lies, Nancy. You are sick, and that's where you need to be. I'm not. I'm fine. So you have to call her and tell her you made a mistake. Sweetheart, you're freezing. I'll get you some coffee. It'll warm me up. I don't want any coffee. She's at the office, so call her now. Here, drink it while it's hot. I'm not going if I don't want to. I'm over 18. So, actually, it doesn't really matter if you call her or not. Nancy, you know what anorexia nervosa is. It's a disease. It's very serious. A woman in a group I go to has it, and you and her could be twins. I'm not listening to this. You're scared, aren't you? I am not scared. And I am not going to some hospital to talk about what I eat and what I don't eat. I hear about it 24 hours a damn day. Nancy, did you eat? Nancy, what did you eat? Eat, eat! <laughs> See, I know. It's so hard. I want to listen. I do. There's this other part of me that won't. And it's like this war going on in my head all the time. And I don't know how to stop it. <laughs> This is a big mistake. Let's get out of here. Dr. Partan is expecting us. Mom, I don't belong here. Look at the girl in that wheelchair. Now look at yourself. I don't see much difference. I don't look like that, Dad. There's nothing wrong with me. Honey, honey, you're sick. If you don't want to do it for yourself, do it for me and Daddy. Please. OK. You can come with me. My mom can come too, right? Uh, I need to speak to your parents just for a minute. Mrs. Walsh, sit down. You too, Mr. Walsh? I don't want to sit. What is it you do want? Oh, I want, I want my life back, my daughter back. What have we done to her? Why is she doing this? I mean, it's not like we're a family of criminals and lunatics. We're happy. We're close. First of all, Nancy is not doing this to you or to Mr. Walsh. She's doing it to herself. Oh, that makes it OK? I don't think so. Mrs. Walsh. Sally. Five months ago, our daughter was happy, healthy. She had friends, a life. I'm sure she seemed to be. What, what is that supposed to, to mean? Be? Like all eating disorders, anorexia nervosa is a complex, difficult disease. I can't give you any easy answers. But I expect that the root of this problem goes back further than five months. I need to talk with Nancy. I have to spend time with both of you. We have to work together to get through this. How long will that take? I don't know. Mom, Dad. Well, is she okay? She's fine. She's got a private room. Well, we talked to the main doctor, and he seemed like a really good guy. Well, what are they going to do for her? They're going to feed her. And there's group therapy? So everything's okay? Everything's going to be fine. She has to reach what they call her target weight. And then she'll be home. Can I visit her? Well, not right away. The routine is very important at first, but you can soon. I'm exhausted. I'm going to bed. Hey, what's wrong? You should be happy. The doctor's going to make her eat and everything's going to be okay. She's coming home. Why is everything so simple to you, Pat? Like on weekends. 
As soon as my dad gets home, he starts to drink. And then he starts these arguments and gets really mean. And pretty soon, he and my mom will be having these stupid fights. Does he pick on you, too? No, but... What? It makes me feel like... I want to disappear. How old were you when that feeling began? Eleven. So when you stopped eating? How did you feel then? Better. Why? Maybe it was because you couldn't control what was going on around you, but you could control what you ate. That's the way I felt too. Great. Great? Yeah, it, it was like everything that was bothering me, like guys and school and my friends. The future. None of it seemed to matter anymore. The only thing that did matter to me was food and not eating it. But now it's different. What about you, Nancy? Is that how you feel? I think it sounds like a lot of lame, random crap to me. Well, that may be, but everyone here is recovering from the same illness. Let's just say you are, too. What will recovery mean to you? Fat. Nancy, what are you doing? Nothing. Put your food on your plate. I ate. Nancy felt unable to control anything in her life. She was going away to college, separating from you. She saw her ordered, familiar life falling apart. But why stop eating? Well, she found something she could control, what she ate. And anorexia is about control. Clinical studies have shown that, although it may be triggered by puberty, separation from friends and parents, as well as body chemistry and biology, at its core, anorexia is a manifestation of the family dynamic. It's a family problem. Why didn't I have a clue that something was wrong with her? We're close. We've done everything together. How did I miss it? You have to understand not eating is not the disease, it's the symptom. The disease is the way Nancy feels about herself. back and get your snack. I don't want my snack. Take it, please, Nancy. It's OK. I'll get someone to clean it up. Dr. Partana, may I speak with you for a moment, please? Excuse me. I've just been with Nancy Walsh, and she says she's too weak to eat in the dining room. Then bring her food to her room. Make sure she eats.
Start eating, please. I will soon, I promise. Hey, what if I have to go? Turn on the light outside your door. I thought she was doing all right. She's been hiding her food. Well, can't you have somebody watch her 24 hours a day? It's not possible. Right now, she's so undernourished, the feeding tube is her only alternative. She's been disconnecting all her IVs. A feeding tube? I'll, I'll, I'll eat. Daddy, Daddy, please take me out of here. You're a good girl. Get in bed. Dad, I know they told you that I wasn't eating and that, and that I've been hiding food. And, and maybe, you know, that's true, but you don't know what it's like, Dad. Nobody can eat it. They do it to punish you. I'll be right outside the door. You're gonna be fine. Please stay, Dad. Now, if you can try and relax, this will go a lot easier, okay? You've gained six pounds. Mom, it's Nancy. I want you to come get me right now. I don't belong here anymore. I can sign myself out anytime I want to. I'm out of here. Where's Nancy Walsh going? She signed herself out. No. If it's left up to her, she'll keep right on starving herself till she dies. Did someone tell you it was okay to leave? No. Then why did you? Mom, I've gained six pounds. I'm better. Well, that's good. Nancy. And I can keep it up on my own. But you were only there a few weeks. Trust me. I am 100% better. I'm going to stay that way. 
I promise. Nancy, what? Thanks for coming to get me, Mom. But, Nancy... Mom, I... I'm okay now. I even have plans. I'm gonna try and get my old job back at the deli, and the next semester, I wanna go back to school. Mom, I'm better, I swear. I love you. Arthur Patano speaking. Why the hell did you let Nancy leave the hospital? She signed herself out. It was not my decision. Well, she shouldn't have been allowed out, and I want her back in there, pronto. I mean, you see how she looks? She looks awful. I know you can't trust her. Well, that's something you have to tell her. How? I mean, she, she doesn't listen to me. There's nothing that Mom? I... Mom? Okay. All right. Who's that? Wrong number. Well, how about something to eat? Have some coffee, honey. Okay. So, how does it look? Looks great. Looks excellent. Okay. Here, have me a plate. Okay, there you go. Okay. I'm gonna get the script. Starving? Something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in that studio. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Are you gonna have it? Sure. Is that all you're gonna have? I can always have seconds later. Yeah, right. What is that supposed to mean? It just looks like you're losing weight again. I mean, Mom's worried about you. I mean, Dad looks like he's been hit with a brick. What What's... would it take you guys to understand that I am doing what I am supposed to be doing? I'm eating, okay? So just give me a break! you up to? Nothing. How did these things get under the bed? I, I don't know. I, I guess I must have just forgot to bring them downstairs. You also forgot to eat them. What'd you do with this morning's breakfast? Nothing. I ate it. What's that? I had made some macaroni and cheese for Tommy, and, and he, he wanted me to eat it with him, but I had already had this, this huge sandwich at the deli, so I decided I'd bring it up here and eat it later. You're lying. I'm not lying, Mom. I swear. Not everyone in the world has to love football, you know. Smart, Franny, really smart. Football is his life. Hi, Franny. Hi, Mrs. Walsh. Nancy's not here. No, I know where she is. What I don't know is, did she eat here? No, she, she never eats here. Oh, for God's sake. You see her every day. You see how she looks. How can you watch her day after day and never see her put a morsel of food in her mouth and not pick up the phone and call me? How can you do that? Are you blind? Are you stupid? That must be it. You must be stupid. Wait a minute. She's a big girl. I'm not her mother. She doesn't want to eat. What am I supposed to do? Tie her down and shove a sandwich down her throat? I'm sorry. It's not my job. 
I mentioned it to her, Mrs. Walsh, I did, but she told me to butt out, that she was okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Bigger rocks. I guess. She's lying. She's just she's just lying. All that crap about eating at the deli. <laughs> she doesn't ever. <sighs> I don't understand. We have a good life. Look around. We love each other. <sighs> maybe that's it. You know how nothing is supposed to be perfect? Well, maybe what's going on with Nancy is God's way of telling us to keep that in mind. My boy. He really let it rip, didn't he? God, let it rip. Well, how else am I going to explain it to myself, huh? Oh, forget it. It was a joke. I don't think your mother's in the mood for a joke, Tom. Mm. She's blaming herself for what's happening to Nancy. I don't think it's her fault. Maybe it's mine. Come on, Dad, don't trash yourself. Just trying to figure it out, son. I've always tried to stay out of your business. Maybe that was wrong. Why? So you let us make our own decisions. What's wrong with that? Maybe I should have spent some more time with Nancy. I just wanted you to pick me up and drive me home. I'm tired, please. The deli was packed. Can we just get out of here? All you do is go to work, go home, go to work. You need a change of scenery, Nancy. Pat, please take me home. Sit down. We have something here that you really love, all right? I'll be right back. Our way. Watch your step. Nancy? Lacey Goodwin. Hi, how are you? I haven't seen you since 10th grade, I know. I transferred to uni. Way to go, Nance. How'd you get so thin? Thin? Yeah, you and Kate Moss. Fabulous. Oh, God, that looks so amazing. Not that you have to worry. Well, it was good to see you again. Take care. I had this idea. If you eat just the stuff that you really I like... I don't want it. You need to scarf the stuff down like there's no tomorrow. I don't know. Don't think about it. Just put it in your I, face. I can't. You can. You're just being stubborn. I would if I could, but I can't. It's all about willpower, Nancy. You can turn it either way. I want to eat. I do. I want to eat, but I can't. You control your brain, Nancy. I don't control anything anymore. Especially my brain. Well, you better get a grip on it, because you're driving everybody nuts. I'm not doing it on purpose. You promised me you were going to eat real food. All I see here is lettuce. I'm just making a snack, Dad. You're not having a snack. You're lying to me. No, I had some rice before, Dad. I, you didn't I had have some rice. Any rice. Know, You're lying. You never have anything but nothing. Lettuce is nothing. It's nothing. Look at you. You're wasting away to nothing. What's going on? You're a bag of bones. I'm not lying this time. I swear, I had some rice. Mom, I swear, you gotta believe me. Corn. Carrots. Okay. 
hurts. Alphabet soup. You've been here since 10 o'clock this morning. What are you doing? There's tons of fat no. floating on top. Now. There's no fat. I drained it. My mom, I like to do it. Please, mom, please. Carrots. Nancy. Nancy, stop it. Vegetables. Boy. What? Oh, no! <laughs> Why are you doing this? Why? What does it mean? Tell me. sitting in the car. I'm scared to go in. I think that if I go inside, Nancy will be there. So bad if I'm at school or somewhere, but at night, every time I come home, it's there. I know. <sighs> sure is tough, isn't it? Tell me about oh. it. I better go in. Nancy was sleeping. She might wake up. Mom. What? You sit here a minute. Oh. 
some soup to warm you up. Oh, I can't. Honey, your, your skin and bones, you hurt because you have no cushion. You need food to warm you, to make your body healthy again. Please let me get you some soup. I want it. I do. But I can't. Something's wrong with Nancy. What? What's wrong? I heard her voice. You dream and go back to sleep. Something's wrong. Resting comfortably, so uh, you both should probably get some sleep too. I don't understand what happened to her. Pyelonephritis. It's a um, a severe kidney infection. Was she complaining of back pain or? Yeah, she's got a lot of aches and pains. Well, she's getting uh, intravenous antibiotics and dextrose and water. She should begin to feel better in a day or two. Uh, and then, uh, you know, she'll be back on a regular diet. But uh, you know, she won't eat. We're not going to force her. You won't feed her. They have a very good eating disorder unit at Parker Pavilion. She's been there. Sometimes the second time around is more successful. She's over 18. She won't stay there. <laughs> well, maybe she should know she could die. I'm sorry. She's in here. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe when she gets out of here. She wants to eat. She told me that this afternoon. She doesn't know what she wants. Well, what are we supposed to do? Give up on her? I don't know what we do. I'm still trying to figure out what we did. Go. Thanks. Phyllis, uh, I owe you an apology. For what? You tried to tell me what was going on with Nancy, and I, I just wouldn't listen. You heard it when you could. And you've done everything under the sun for Pete's sake. And none of it has made any difference.
this morning. I looked out my window at the skin and bones that used to be my daughter. She was shoving little pieces of lettuce into her mouth with her fingers. As the illness progresses, the control changes hands. It controls her. It sounds like you're saying all anyone can do now is sit around and watch her die. No, I'm not. There is something. Good. You just tell me what it is, and I'll do it. I'll do anything. I'll save her if it kills me. You can't, Sally. You and Nancy are too entangled. You're too dependent on each other for every breath you take. It can't be you. Why do I have to get a lawyer? So that we can get her back in the hospital. Well, what has one thing got to do with the other? Well, she's over 18. We can't force her. The lawyer has to go to the court and get them to say that she's incompetent. You mean I have to go into a courtroom and say my daughter is crazy? Incompetent. Incompetent is different. I can't do that. You have to. We're too close. I, I, I can't help her. It has to be you. I can't do that. Well, if you can't, she'll die. Hey, Tom. What's up? Renee said you sounded frantic on the phone. Well, life's a little frantic right now, George. Listen, uh... I need you to draw up a document giving me permission to handle Nancy's medical life. Nancy's medical life? Yeah. What's going on? Oh, she's in very, very, very bad shape, George. Her hair's falling out. She barely weighs 80 pounds. Her body's feeding on her own muscles. Well, I'll file the papers. It could take at least a month to get a hearing. A month? Well, could you tell him it's an emergency? I think in a month she'll be dead. Yeah, of course I can. All right. Then I drop by and say hi. You need some help? What are you thinking? I was thinking about a dream I had. Remember when I was a little girl and I used to love to paint and draw? And I'd sit up in my room with that paint set that you and Mom gave me? You killed a lot of hours with that paint set. When in my dream, I had this brush and I was swirling it around in a glass of water and, and just making the most beautiful colors. And I felt so happy, just like I used to. And then I woke up. And all those feelings just disappeared. The wings they gave me today got my pilot's license. That was one of the happiest days of my life. These wings have brought me a lot of good fortune. And I want you to have them.
Hey, Dad, you got the fish. It's great. Excellent. You just this. throw them in there, right? Get some over there, too, man. In a minute. Your mother and I have something to say to you. What's up? Your sister's a lot sicker than anybody ever thought. She's in no shape to be making serious decisions. Uh, I don't understand decisions. But... Serious decisions. Decisions concerning her health, doctors, hospitals, what's best for her medically. So what are you saying? She's nuts? No, 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 absolutely not. Well, yeah. In the area of her health, she is, so we're gonna ask the judge to let Daddy make those decisions for her. Well, that sounds good to me. What'd you say when you told her? Well, we haven't told her yet. That's next. <sighs> good luck. You're supposed to be my therapist, not theirs! He is your therapist! Dad, just get away from me! I don't even want to talk your to you Your mother has done this. nothing wrong. I have done nothing wrong. We know you're sick, your heart, your liver, they're Dad, damaged. Dad, I can do this on my own! You cannot do it on your I own. Can't. All you do on your own is lie to us. Oh, you cannot do this, Dad! I am over 18! I am legally of age! Nancy, we know that. We know that. And in a court of law, you have the opportunity of explaining uh, that to the judge. I am not explaining anything to anyone. Do you hear me? Oh, oh great shot. Uh, there we go. Here? Hi, Nancy. This is Lenore Malay. She's your lawyer. My lawyer? Who hired her? The court appointed me. Who pays? Your family. Well, uh, I'll be downstairs if you need me. Do you understand why your parents are taking you to court? Yeah. Because they want to put me back into that hospital. And why do you want to fight them on this? There's no way that I am going back there. Okay. Do you feel that you're strong enough to put yourself through the hearing? If I can win? Yeah. I'm strong enough. Okay. Then I'll do everything I can to help you. I just want to know if you're okay. I'm okay.
birds cut down those elms. You see that? Nancy? It's a shame. They were beautiful. I think they had that disease. Dutch elm. There's no way I'm going to give up getting this guardianship. I'm not going to stand by and let you die. solemnly swear that the testimony you are about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, I do. State your name. My name is Thomas Walsh, Sr. You may take the stand. You are the plaintiff or petitioner in this case, are you not? Yes, Jerry. And you are the father of Nancy Walsh, isn't that correct? That's correct. Now, I show you a verified complaint that was filed on July 13th. Are you familiar with that complaint? Yes, I am. And did you sign that verified complaint and consent to its application? Yes, I did. Were the allegations of that verified complaint true as of the date you signed that complaint? Yes, they were. You understand that your application is to be appointed special medical guardian for your daughter, Nancy Walsh? I understand that. And that your appointment will be until further order of the court? You understand that? Mr. Walsh, do you understand that? I understand that. And that it will be your obligation and your responsibility to make decisions in the best interest of your daughter. Do you understand that? Step down, Mr. Walsh. Your Honor, after speaking with my client just now, as her court-appointed attorney, we would raise no objection and would submit to the application of the court to the appointment of her father as her special medical guardian. Now, this guardianship will be for the purpose of making medical decisions concerning her health and welfare only.
Miss Walsh, are you prepared to acknowledge that you have a problem? <laughs> yes, I am. Is there any question I can answer for you? No. Then thank you, Miss Walsh. <laughs> there is one thing I want to say. The fact that this court finds that Nancy Walsh is in need of a medical guardian, that she is unable to consent to medical treatment, does not mean that she is an incompetent person, as a layman might consider that term. It doesn't mean that she is crazy. It doesn't mean that she can't make other normal decisions we all make. I emphasize this so that no one misunderstands these proceedings. With that said, and I hope clear to you, I say thank you and good luck to you all. I think that was, that was the start of my recovery. But believe me, it was just a start. I had a long way to go after that. See, that's the weird thing about recovery. I've learned that I may never be completely cured, that this disease doesn't always go away. It's kind of lurking around like my Achilles heel. It's all right, because I'm stronger than it is. I know I can make it. I know I have the strength to save myself. Really, that's the most important thing I've learned. It's the most important thing any of us can learn. I'm Tracy Gold. Eating disorders, including anorexia nervosa, affects some 8 million Americans, thousands of whom will ultimately die from their effects. 
If you or someone you know suffers from an eating disorder, please don't wait till it's too late. There is help available.